Babe. All right, welcome everyone to the Beaverton Arts Commission July meeting. We will start with roll. Commissioner Lynn Anderson. Here. Commissioner Rebecca Benoit. Here. Commissioner Jim Blake. Here. Alternate Destry Bennell. Vice Chair Jane Dahl. Um, let's see. I believe Jane was on the phone and maybe did she um, get disconnected maybe? Yeah, it looks like she did and then she's getting in again here. Okay. Commissioner Sharon Dunham. Here. Commissioner R. Ryan Hendricks. Here. Commissioner Shoshana Landsberg. Here. Commissioner Sue Pike. Here. Commissioner Peg Silloway. Here. Commissioner Gina Wilson. Uh, she just emailed <laughs> saying that she's trying to join. So I'll follow up with her on that. Okay. Uh, Vice Chair Jane Dahl, I see Jane. Hi, I'm here. Thank you. And alternate Destry Bennell, I, I saw your hand raised. Yes, or earlier. So yes, here. So yeah. So we got you. Thank you. And excused tonight are Commissioner April Rose Castillo, Commissioner Shelley Fagan, and Commissioner Sydney Trimble. So thank you, everyone. As Beth mentioned, Council President Laura Mitchell is unable to attend tonight. So we will not have council updates, but we will move forward with our grantee spotlight. And we are really excited tonight to have with us Jayanthi Raman. She's a dancer, performer, author, researcher, and choreographer. She has written two books about traditional Indian dance and has been a grant recipient from the Beaverton Arts Program. So welcome, Jayanthi. It's wonderful to have you and congratulations on, uh, on receiving a grant. And we would love to hear more about your work. Thank you so much. Thank you. First of all, it's a great honor to be here and a great honor to be presenting to all of you. And I have been a recipient and also been supported by the Beaverton Arts Commission for over 30 years. So I am, uh, I have been affiliated and I've known and I've been a Beaverton resident and I've brought so many of my events to Beaverton um, to, and even including my nonprofit events to Beaverton and uh, so it's, it's a great honor to be Beaverton because it's, it's a quirky little artistic city and, and everyone is very kind and loving. So on that note, um, I wanna share a little slide presentation that I made so that I can, instead of seeing me, you can see something more interesting, my slide presentation. So I'm gonna start with that. And um, you know after that, if you have questions, I'm glad and happy to answer. Uh, so I wanted to make this slide presentation because I wanted you all to know how much of an impact you're making for Beaverton residents and for the kids and the adults and the youth in the community growing up here learning this art form. So here is the sharing. I'm going into a slideshow mode. So uh, this is my dance company and my dance school. It's called Natya Dance Academy. And my website is jaintiraman.com. So that has information about my work that has I've been doing for the past 30 plus years. Uh, last year, 2020, 21 was of course the pandemic had hit us. Uh, the Arts Commission was very kind with the Arts Project Grant from um, the Beaverton Arts Commission. They allowed me to turn it into a virtual event. And, um, and I did this all for two days instead of the one day that I had promised and written in my grant, I did this on two days. Um, featuring over 20 students and uh, 10 of my senior most students performing ACOM, Unity and Diversity. So I wanted to bring, showcase a lot of arts, artistic things and explain each art form. We had about um, 7,000 uh, people who had viewed this over the, um, uh, uh, on, the, on the second day. And on the first day, we had about 4,500 people who had viewed it. So I was, I was, I was actually surprised, taken aback because 
um, I did not expect that at all. So we had views from um, around the world. So not just here. So for 4500 the first day, but I think the second day, which was featuring uh, much more senior dancers, we had a higher view. Um, in 2016-17, of course, uh, Dance of Hummingbirds was something that I had presented at um, the uh, Performing Arts Center and it was sold out. So I restaged it uh, here. And I was very, very lucky because the uh, the dancers who were performed there came here and they performed uh, at the um, city library auditorium and, and there was a full page coverage and this is just the spot of you can see now how the press just went crazy and covered the entire thing. I was very um, delighted to actually work with Paul and Peterson, the Oregon poet laureate who wrote English poetry. And I also introduced Sanskrit, my Latin, Latin of the East, the Sanskrit language uh, and, and verses from Sanskrit language um, parallel to her poetry to bring this to fruition. This, is, this was a very major impact and I brought it here. And as you can see, uh, the press went. The press just covered everything so beautifully, full page coverage, which is great for any artist. Um, you know, we are a little narcissistic. We like this. <laughs> we like to be featured. Uh, erasing borders. This was another thing that, so every time I get a project from a grant from a Beaverton Arts Commission, I do something very different. I change everything. I do something very different and I, I go in an experimental mode and I Show, showcase something very creative, very different. For this, I, I, I definitely did something different because I brought not only Indian classical dance, I brought modern dance along with it. I choreographed both modern dance as well as Bharatanatyam and I featured it. And these are some of the girls, but these are the young ones. What, what I want to show here is the piece that I wanted to share with you, just a small piece. <laughs> I just wanted to show a small glimpse of, uh, of what I had done. Uh, so there I choreographed both mo the modern dance, thank you, and the Indian classical dance. So um, that was actually the guest of honor that day was Terry Mathern, who was a modern dance professor and a teacher, as well as a choreographer and performer from Portland. So she had come and that she was, she loved the, the event where she did not know I choreographed modern dance until that day. And so she said, whoa. So, Indian dance in itself, my, the, where I learned from, there was a lot of um, creativity for modern dance in where I, when, where I studied Indian dance. Panchatantra, again, Indian dance theater. Again, you can see experimental work. I brought dance theater 
along with folk dances and folk tales and Indian classical dance to bring to life folk tales from India. These are some of the oldest folk tales, 25 year old folk tales that I brought to life uh, through Indian dance music. And some of the legendary musicians helped me in creating some of the music for this. Um, and then it was featured as one of the top five um, critics choice and the top five picks of the week. So that was again, you know, a wonderful compliment. Sign Mudras, this is another one that I presented with the 2013-14 grant project grant from RAC. Uh, uh, and I had American sign language, the gestures of that, along with Indian dance, the gestures we used there to showcase storytelling. So again, this was experimental dance theater and it was very well received. In fact, I Forest Guru Arts Commission gave me funding for that. Again, RAC gave me funding for this and I did it at universities and colleges, which was so well received after I did my first presentation with Beaverton Arts Commission um, funding. So again, you know, every step that I have taken when I've done experimental stuff, I've taken it with, with the first step was taken by BAC grant and the next steps were easier. <laughs> so again, this was, again, you can see the costuming that this one, I designed the costuming and we did some of the work for the Sign Mudras concert. So I wanted to bring uh, contemporary elements along with classical elements and um, and uh, sign mudras of course, American Sign Language ASL. And again, this had a very nice um, coverage, half a page coverage in the Oregonian, which was nice. Thank you for um, the Arts Leadership Award, which you all gave me, the City of Beaverton and the Beaverton Arts Commission, which you honored me and recognized my work. Uh, in 2013, you had given which work that I had done over 20 years. Now I've done over 30 years of work. Um, you know, it's I'm older than 30 years of work. So thank you for all of the support that you have given me and all of the work that I have done, experimentations, things that have been creative and, and opened me into new things. Um, and I, I thank you for that. And that is my, um, that is my little presentation that I just put together this afternoon. <laughs> and I wanted to make sure I shared that with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, the one of the main things that I wanted to say was each step of the way um, Beaverton local people, children here, um, all brought um, you know their own um, their own experimental thoughts and everything into into this so when I was doing something new they would all encourage me and say let's go for it so this was this was thank you so much um, for all the work that all the work that you have given me and I and people that I could engage in the community thank you thank you Raz. thank you so much um, I'm open to answering any questions thank you any questions um, that you have for me Jyanti, I just want to say thank you so much for the uh, this wonderful cumulative uh, uh, canon of contributions you've made to our community and our arts community. It's very impressive, and uh, and we're honored to to share in in celebrating your work. So thank you so much for sharing for sharing your talents with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And it's a great honor. Like I said, it's a great honor. And I, you know, um, in, in the future, I, I actually have served on the board of the Beaverton Arts Commission. It was one of the first things I did um, about 20 years ago. I had just moved here into the country and I had, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. And, and wow. I was on the board, I learned a lot. And I thank so many people who helped me and, and, and nourished my creativity, my career. Um, and one of the first things that, uh, you know, over the past 30 years that you have helped me sort of. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you, Razi. Any, any questions that I can answer or, or, you know, the impact that you've had on, I mean, it's obvious the impact you've had on my career, on my work as a teacher, as a choreographer, as a performer. Um, and of course, I would always complain that there is no venue uh, for me to showcase and any even in the video you can see there's a very small venue uh, space there on stage I would complain um, and so now that's being resolved with the beautiful structure that's being built the auditorium that's being built uh, the research center um, so I mean that was the only thing that I would complain about constantly so now I'm so happy yes Jim 
Yeah, I guess I, to, the question is, what would you like to see us do? Uh, you're building the most beautiful complex. I'm so excited to see part of it. And I'm sure, you know, I, I remember I was at the Council of Champions uh, breakfast. They, you know, uh, I think it was Janie Scott and someone else. They had invited me to come and talk about uh, at the at the research center uh, in, in Beaver next to Costco. There is a big research center. So I, I went there early morning and they had breakfast. The mayor was there. A lot of in the, people from the corporate world were there. And, um, you know, they asked me to talk about my impact. And I said, this is, you know, all the stuff that we've been doing. And I've been collaborating with modern dancers, you know, different people um, in the community. And we bring performances. But there is always that one lack of venue. And if that is it. And my last line was, if you build it, we will come. And <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's a very famous from the movie. Um, of course, but, um, and that was my last line and where I said, if you build it, we will come and, and Pat Reeser and everyone was there. And I, I, I remember walking up to her, holding her hand and saying, thank you. And she said, uh, before I turn into ashes, I want to see this done. I said, you and your grandchildren and their grandchildren, you will be alive to, and kicking <laughs> to see this up and moving. So it was very well, emotional. Well, Pat, uh, Pat Reeser said the same thing that she wanted to see this venue built uh, while she was still alive. She didn't want to, you know, come in with their with their ashes. So she, she, that's what she told me that day. That is exactly what she told me that day. Is I want to see this before I turn into ashes. So I said, you, you will be there. Your grandchildren, their grandchildren, you will still be alive and kicking, and and this will be done, and you will be happy. And I remember telling her that and said, God will stay with you, and um, you know, you will be healthy. So. Yeah, I think the exact quote was something along the lines of, I want to show up at the opening in a dress, not an urn. <laughs> so we yeah. have you to thank for that. Thank you so much for inspiring her too. That's great. She's amazing. Yeah. You know, she's so tiny and she's so amazing. I know, so, I know, I know. I know. It's amazing. So, yeah. And that's that's a lot. You know, we always think that the Beaverton Arts Commission is is a is the Beaverton city of Beaverton is very small and it's you know it's this little niche, um, but the impact you've had on Washington County artists, uh, not just Beaverton based artists, the kindness that you extend to people um, beyond that to actually come and present is is the main thing. My always and my only concern was the Beaverton City Library Auditorium was the only place that I could come and perform. ACMA is very expensive um, and uh, there's no way I can do this with a thousand dollar grant, but um, if there is a way to help um, and, and you know, even during the pandemic when the project grant was, they allowed me to change it to, to a virtual programming, um, that, was, that was really nice. So I, I don't think I have any thing. And uh, I, I do think because of the work involved right now, once the auditorium is set up and going, you're gonna see a lot of people. A lot of us are waiting, graduation recitals, nonprofit recitals, a theater, Indian arts, uh, at least from, uh, from this side, I know it's, we're gonna have at least about um, two dozen events that we wanna bring every year uh, to, to, the, to, the, um, to the complex once it's built. I'm very excited. And we look forward to celebrating your work and seeing your work at the RECER also. Thank you so much. Thank you. Are there any further questions or comments at this time for Jayanti? Well, many thanks again, Jayanti. It's so wonderful to, to learn more about your work and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Thanks guys. Thanks for the invitation. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, our next agenda item is public comment. And I, I see Razier in, in our audience. Hi, Razier. Would, would you like to share your announcements with us? Yes, yes, I have many. Um, and I'm going to capstone with uh, kind of a, a request to the Beaverton Art Program. So the first thing I want to share is that La Strada de Pastelli, as Jim is our cheerleader wearing our t-shirt, um, La Strada de Pastelli is the chalk art festival that happens here in Beaverton. It's produced by 2D40, which is a nonprofit organization. Uh, the event is happening August 13th and 14th. It's happening in collaboration with the Beaverton Night Market. 
So you will see the chalk artists are all booked. So we have artists flying in from all over the country, including as far as Georgia, Southern California, I believe Wisconsin um, or Michigan, all with very different styles. And this year, um, although there, there isn't a whole lot of direction for the artists, except to say that they needed to showcase their authentic self to really dig deep into their own heritage and create visual imagery, their designs that um, celebrate their own culture and celebrate their own heritage. So you'll see that with the chalk artists this year. And then our collaboration with the Beaverton Night Market is um, all the performers. So we will have lots and lots of um, performers, spoken word artists that will be uh, stationed with each chalk art cluster. So August 13th and 14th, downtown Beaverton, it's free. And I put the link in the chat. Um, along with this, 2D40 has been doing a number of community buzz builders. So this coming weekend, Saturday, July 17th, we will have a chalk artist in front of Jan's bookstore, which is the corner of Southwest Tucker and Southwest First. Um, and so I put that in the chat too, so you can see that. So from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., chalk artists and Jan's, Lori, the manager at Jan's, has coordinated four uh, book authors that will be coming and doing book signings. So I recommend bringing kids, bringing grandkids, coming if you like to collect books yourselves or thinking about gifts for other friends around the country, um, come enjoy the live chalk art and get to meet some of our local authors. So that's this Saturday, July um, 17th from 11 to 2. And I want to capstone all of this with a request from, I think technically it would be the Beaverton Art Program, but it's really to rally you guys as commissioners around a project. The hope, I've, we've been emailing back and forth with Beth, um, and I've been CCing Shane and Shelly and a couple of other um, art commissioners in that we would love to do chalk kits. Um, so as you can imagine, to bundle chalk pastels, like quality chalk pastels into little baggies that these chalk kits could then be given away to our community. 2D4D has been working with the library and we have a buzz builder. Um, these are when we uh, commission a chalk artist to do a piece. We have a buzz builder scheduled for August 5th, Thursday, August 5th in front of the Beaverton Library. And the Beaverton Library um, has said that they would be happy to hand out these chalk kits. So we have a mechanism to get these kits to the community <clears throat> to ask for support with some funding. This is separate than the funding that 2D40 has already received to make the event happen. And um, Beth, if you fill in fill too, um, there was talk that the Beaverton Arts um, program still had about $2,000 that could help to bundle these chalk kits. And we're proposing um, that money would support creating 500 chalk kits of studio quality pastels. And in the kits would also include a flyer that would share details about the Beaverton Art Program, the Beaverton Arts Commission, and many of the grants that you offer and ways that we can help encourage people to engage with the Arts Commission. Um, and also a little bit of information about 2D40 is helping to bundle these. But the big request for everybody today is manpower. So I would love to activate some of you commissioners to help us bundle these kits. So it's a request for funding and also a request for a little bit of manpower. Um, and then 2D40, our role in this is to order the supplies. Um, I invite everybody to come over to my house, of course, and we can make a nice chalky mess at the house. Um, we'll, we'll facilitate the supplies, we'll facilitate getting these chalk kits to the library, and we'll facilitate promoting that these art supplies are available for our local community to come and get straight from the library. And as you know, the libraries are reopening and they've been amazing places of community engagement, even through the 18 months of pandemic. So I'd love to hear from you guys if this is something that our back members are interested in helping with and just kind of what your thoughts might be about um, creating some giveaways, uh, specific giveaways uh, circling around chalk to help really continue to promote this large chalk festival that's coming August 13th and 14th. Any thoughts? When would that do it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what we would need to do um, is upon approval that um, that funding is available, it takes about 10 days to get the chalk uh, material in. And we could schedule um, doing like bundling these packs probably, uh, let's see, where does that put us on the calendar? So 
um, so maybe like July 29th, maybe that weekend of July 30th and August 1st. And I just bundled 500 kits for the city of Hillsborough and it took about five hours and that was just one person. So I think if we have a good team, it should only take about three, just a couple of hours to put them all together. I would absolutely love to accept um, my my uncle recently passed away and I'll be in California for that week, unfortunately, for the celebration of life. I come back, I think, if Saturday is the first or second, I, I come back on Saturday. So if it was another time, <laughs> that week is the only week. Yeah, my, son, my son's getting married that weekend. Gosh, should I do this or that? <laughs> Ross, is this down the street from me? Is this at your house? Uh huh. Yeah. So right off of Murray and Hart. Sign me up. Yay! Okay. Just let me know which day. Okay. I'd yeah. like to do it too. Okay. I heard that, Peg. Yeah. Okay. Great. That, that weekend should work for me. It's the thirtieth. It's a Friday. Thirty first. First. Okay. Okay. So what I'd love to do for anybody who's interested, let in the chat, if I can capture your guys' emails and phone numbers, that way I can follow up to it. Okay. Or, or if anyone doesn't object, I, I can just send Rosier the roster. That's fine. Okay. I'll, re I'll, re I'll redact the, the one address that was preferred to be redacted. I just want to, I just want to drive home the point that it's been a year and a half since we've all been out there volunteering and, and being part of the community. We're hungry for it. Find a way. I understand that things happen, but take take time and find a way to get involved. You will not regret it. Let's get out there. Let's be visible. This is an awesome opportunity. Let's let's find a way. Rosie, could you also put your contact info in the chat for <coughs> folks to, to reach out? Yes, good idea. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah. And um, you mentioned funding. Is is that Beth? Is that something that you all are looking for approval from us, or do you not need that? Um, we don't need that. That comes out of our budget for event sponsorship. So, okay. we'll, yeah. All right. <clears throat> so it sounds like we've got um, Sharon, Peg, Ryan. Uh, so at least we've got three back stairs, so that's awesome. That is going to make things really quick and fast. Anybody else that I missed? Okay. Hey, Rosier, what, what time is the talk, talk artist going to be in front of the library on the 5th? I can tell you. We have her talking bright and early, so she's actually going to start at 7.30 in the morning with the intention of finishing her talk by 12.30. And, um, and then the library staff, because this is kind of a, a, a fun activity in front of the library, they'll have their regular operating hours as well. And so we'll make sure that they've got these chalk kits and they just continue to get them away. Roz, is anybody coming back from the previous live event? Um, yes, uh, Sharon Chan is coming back from 2019 and Jennifer Raposa. Um, Sharon is the one, if you guys remember, she's a dancer. So when she does chalking, she ends up like kind of like doing the splits with knee pads on and she's, um, I think she's got like purple hair. And Jennifer Raposa is also, um, she might even be a fitness trainer, but Jennifer did the one where it's a woman's face and then the pink flowers and like, it looks like she's getting this like, um, very energetic, kind of open screen with the flowers surrounding her, her hair. Yeah. And then, so the other big thing about this year's Lestrata, so in 2019, we had um, Wayne and Cheryl Renshaw, they did a 3D piece. This year, we're having Dave and Shelly Brenner, who are doing a 20 foot by 25 foot 3D piece, right in front of Lionheart Coffee, in the middle of the Be Beaverton Dining Common. And all of the art that's being created, so including the work that's being created in front of the library, in front of Jan's books, and for La Strada, will all stay for an additional seven days after it's been created. 
um, because we recognize that some people still are not comfortable going out into big crowds. And so we wanted to be able to have like have an opportunity for them to come and enjoy at their own leisure. So we've asked all the property owners and all of our hosts to keep the artwork for a full week. Awesome. Well, thank you, Rosie, so much. And, and thank you for uh, adding your contact info to the chat so folks can reach out also. Yes. Thank you. And I'll coordinate the time and I'll coordinate the date. And so just show up, just let me know you're coming so we'll have lots of snacks. Great, thank you. Thank you. I see we also have Kathy French with us. Uh, Kathy is a member of ATRAC, which is the Human Rights Advisory Committee. And she is here tonight um, to briefly share a project that they are doing uh, that ha has some art components to it. So welcome, Kathy. It's great to meet you and see you. Thank you. Um, we have a a special art project that is interactive in the community. We are, um, a goal of it is interaction with community members and the police and a track. So it can, it will consist of a, um, something that we're looking for an artist for and that is on top of a table or behind a poster display. The artist will have some choice in this. Is a big sort of a community welcome uh, that um, typifies what we're doing. <coughs> Excuse me. And People will have cards to fill out. Each card will have a question, three questions. I'll read the card. Welcome. Much conversation has taken place in Beaverton and communities across the country during the past year about community safety. Please share your thoughts and ideas on this card. Your card will be displayed here and will be shared with the Beaverton Human Rights Advisory Commission and the Beaverton Police Department. We appreciate your input. We will host a forum in late fall 2021, winter 2022, to discuss the information you have shared. Please visit the Human Rights Advisory Commission website for details. So there are three questions on this card. What does a safe community for all people look like? How do or can police officers make our community safe? How can we work together to make our community safe? And the back of the card will ask for some demographic data such as age, ethnic, ethnicity, if people want to share, gender, if people want to share, and the neighborhood that people live in. This is intended to work for preschoolers through elderly, so that there will be materials for people to draw, <coughs> or people can write, and then the artist will be given $500 to make the display that really invites people to come in and participate. Both police will be present and a track to be leading it. The, this will be popped up at many community places such as the farmer's market, uh, b and food cartel, library family story time. The exact places have not been determined yet. And so we are looking for an artist and wonder if you might be able 
to help with ideas about how to find somebody. Would the artist be required to be at all the different meetings? No. Mm -hmm. So you're just looking for someone who can come up with a good idea. Come up with a good idea and then implement that good idea. And Kathy, what does your timeline look like? Well, we had thought maybe we can start toward the end of August. Maybe not. Um, we are, because it's a pop-up, we are flexible enough to uh, bring it up first a bit later, if need be. It will be brought up several times in the community. Kathy, um, when I briefly talked to Dory about it, uh, she said you guys were thinking about um, using ACMA students. Is that something you're still thinking about? Using who students? Uh, the, the high school students. Um, we are, that would be a wonderful idea. What do you think about that idea? I don't know. Do any of the teachers in the room have ideas? <laughs> do you have a budget? Yes, we have a budget. Our budget is about a thousand dollars. And I'm so sorry. I'm I don't know if, of course, 500 is exactly is for the artist. And the other 500, I'm not sure whether it's another 500 or a thousand for the materials and the setup. Um, you guys could also apply for one of our small project grants. Those are up to a thousand dollars. I can send that to you and Dory. That would give you a little bit more of a budget, which I think will be helpful. You asked the question whether or not um, it might be good for ACMA students or high school students in general. Um, in general, the idea is probably a good one, um, uh, but they do take a little more um, focus um, or, or guidance. So, mm -hmm. so, um, it may be good if you want a student to also have an adult paired with them, a joint venture, if you will. Uh, do you mean an adult artist mentor or do you mean Dory? Um, I'm just saying if you, um, if you want a student involvement, um, they take a uh, a lot more focus and kind of direction, um, okay. you know, and so it'd be good for them to have a mentor of some sort. So okay. I want to let, let them, you know, run, run wild. <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, a student would actually be my preference, but I'm not the whole committee. And, and Kathy, I just uh, want to point out that Rosier has also added to the chat, the Tualatin Valley creates directory for local artists and she um, has graciously provided a link there. So that would also be a great resource too. Thank you. Thank you, Rosier. Yes, and then, thank you, Rosier. And then one last kind of uh, uh, recommendation. Um, if you want a student, um, uh, you may want to look at your timeline um, because the end of August is is difficult because the teachers are on a well-deserved vacation um, and uh, a lot of them don't check email and they miss they may miss out on an opportunity that they have a student that they think might be good for it so okay Thank you, Ryan. That's an excellent suggestion. Kathy, would you be willing to share your, your contact info with us in the chat in case? Sure, I'd be willing out? to do that. that oh, way, 
way we can be stay in touch if folks have additional uh, recommendations. And yeah. will will HRAC be discussing this at your next meeting? We have discussed it a little bit at every meeting. There is a subcommittee that does the big work on it. And it's been a wonderful process because there are police on the subcommittee and we've never really done that before. I, I leaned on my keyboard so I'm going to go ahead and send this to you. And yeah. Kathy, um, I can also, you know, coordinate with you and Dory. I have, you know, I have your information. Oh, great. Thank you, Beth. I really appreciate that. Yeah, so I'm going to send you the small project grant info. I will send you via TBC directory. Um, I might have a few ideas of artists that you could contact. Um, and what was I going to say? I think maybe that was it. And, and Kathy, feel free to, to please reach out to us. Um, and, and of course, Beth, also, if, if HRAC needs further recommendations or suggestions as the project moves forward. And if there are any other opportunities to collaborate between the two, uh, between the Beef and Arts Commission and HRAC, please keep us posted on that also. That would be wonderful. Thank you so very much for okay. letting me come and for interacting with me, giving these wonderful ideas. Thanks. Well, thank you for, for sharing the idea with us and, and letting us know about uh, the project you all are doing. So thank you so much for sharing your time. Thanks. All right. So we will move on to our next agenda item. We're running a little behind schedule. Uh, our next item is approvals of the minutes from our June 9th BAC meeting. I have a question. If it's just Scrivener kinds of things, Beth, should I just send those in or should I say them here? Yeah, if it's not affecting any of the content in terms of like the meaning, yeah, you can just send me that. If, if you found typos or something like that. Yeah, it was basically a hundred thousand instead of you know things like that. Thanks, Sharon. Yep. So I only I have three, and I'll just send them in. Thank you. Were there any other questions or comments on the minutes before we approve them? Doesn't look like it. So would someone like to make a motion to approve the minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes. Great, thank you, Jim. Jim has made a motion to approve the minutes. Do we have a second? I second. Thank you, Ryan has seconded. So it is moved and seconded that we approve the minutes for the June BAC meeting. Is there any further discussion at this time? Okay, so we're ready to vote. The question is, should the June minutes be approved? All those in favor, please. Um, give a visual approval since we're on Zoom. Great. Any opposed? And it doesn't look like there's any abstentions. So the motion is pass it, has passed. The minutes are approved. Thank you, everyone. Our next item. I'm sorry, uh, Jim, what is your last name? I don't seem to have that. Uh, it's Blake, uh, B-L-A-I-C-H. There, thank you. Did you find it? It's just for the notes. I didn't have the spelling. Nobody ever gets that right. <laughs> All right. So our next item, and thank you again, Destry, for taking notes for us and, and just holler if, if there's anything else we need to repeat. Thank you. Our next item is approval of the Arts Commission bylaws. So the city has updated the bylaws for all boards and commissions, the Arts Commission uh, we received a copy from Beth to review. 
Were there any other questions or comments anyone had on those changes? Doesn't look like it. So would someone like to make a motion to approve the Arts Commission bylaws? I helped write them. I'll, uh, I'm, I'll make the motion. <laughs> Great. Jim has mo made a motion to approve the bylaws. Do we have a second? I helped write them all second it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jane. Jane has seconded, so it's moved and seconded that we approve the bylaws. Is there any further discussion? <clears throat> Just if those two are good with it, I'm good with it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so it looks like we're ready to vote. The question on the table is, should we approve the Arts Commission bylaws updates? And all those in favor, please show a visual approval sign for us. Scanning, great. Is there anyone opposed? And are there any abstentions? Okay, the motion passes. Our Bylaws updates are approved. Thank you so much, everyone. And our next agenda item right on time is the 1% for art presentation. And we are um, very lucky to have two city staff members with us, Beth Toby, our arts program manager, and also Cadence Petros. And they will provide an overview of the 1% for art program. Um, great, thank you. Um, for some reason, as I'm trying to share my screen, I lost the ability to see the screen. Cadence, do you want to um, introduce yourself while I pull this up? Sure, no problem. Hi, everybody. There's some familiar faces and some new faces. My name is Cadence Petros, and I'm the Development Division Manager at the city. Um, I lead a team that works on affordable housing, um, downtown redevelopment, parking, and sometimes art centers. Um, and so we are currently um, the real estate lead for um, the development of the RESER and the uh, adjacent public parking garage. And so um, we have some um, recent experience doing public art under the 1% for Art program. And then I also was the project manager for the Public Safety Center Plaza, and so had some involvement with that effort as well. Thanks, Cadence. So can everyone see this, my screen, my PowerPoint? Okay, great, thank you. Yep. All right, so tonight I'm going to give you an overview of the city's 1% for art program. So chapter 3.16, of the Beaverton Code directs the process for the acquisition of art through the city's 1% for Art program. The 1% for Art program funds public art that is included or nearby in city facilities in which construction cost is $50,000 or more. The city also funds public art in other ways. For example, the arts program is funded through the TLT, the transit lodging, lodging tax, um, which is the tax that patrons pay when they stay in a hotel in Beaverton. The process for review and approval of public art is essentially the same for all of the public art projects in Beaverton, regardless of how they're funded. Um, following best practices, the final approval by the Beaverton Arts Commission. So again, the, the uh, code language states that um, major city construction projects which involve the construction or alteration of a city facility with an estimated construction cost of $50,000 or more are subject to this 1% for art um, regulation. Um, public works projects like roads, water projects, et cetera, are exempt. So it's really intended for facilities um, that the public is going to be able to use. If you wanna read the full code, here is a link to it. You can also get access to that from the Beaverton City website, beavertonoregon.gov. If you just go to the search at the top, you can just type in city charter and then you can get to the code and go to chapter 3.16. <clears throat> so 
So the code actually is a little bit specific about how it uh, how the, the selection process goes for the acquisition of art for the city. So it says the selection committee shall consist of the architect or designer for each major city construction project, three professional artists and one resident of the city who is not a member of the Beaverton Arts Commission. Um, this selection panel, of course, makes a recommendation to the BAC and typically the PAC first and then the BAC. Um, but per the code, it just says the Arts Commission has the final approval. And I wanted to note that we have considered this the minimum, minimum number of panelists um, and have invited more voting panelists as well as non-voting advisors and staff for major projects. So for example, um, with PRCA Plaza sculpture, um, these are the people that were included on the selection panel. Um, these were the voting members. So Patricia Reeser, we had three project architects, uh, a representative from ATRAC, um, a local public art expert, um, a public artist, uh, a rep from the Diversity Advisory Board, um, both Shelly and Gina from the BAC uh, attended were, were voting members, um, uh, a representative from THPRD, the Parks and Rec District, um, and then a rep from the Oregon Arts Commission. And then non-voting advisors, so those are people that were part of the selection panel in case the panel had questions, could provide context. Of course, Chris was there. <laughs> um, our three project managers from the city, including Cadence, is here tonight. Uh, myself, um, our public art consultant, Kristen Ramirez, who is managing the project or the process, um, a rep from the Beaverton Arts Foundation. And then there were actually several other additional design experts like lighting experts, experts and things like that that were in the room. <clears throat> so <clears throat> requests for qualifications or RFQs <clears throat> are considered the preferred approach in most public art calls. Um, this is the best practice in the public art management field. <clears throat> the approach requires less work for the artists up front when they apply. This is important because artists don't usually have the resources and time to develop a complex proposal up front without some sort of compensation, particularly emerging artists and our artists from marginalized communities. The RFQ approach um, selects finalists based on their past work uh, like a portfolio. Artists are asked to submit examples of past work, that can be photos, videos, um, their website, a letter of interest, an artist statement, references, and a resume. The selection panel then meets and selects several finalists, usually somewhere between two and four, and they typically provide a stipend then to each finalist to develop a project proposal and then present that to the panel in an interview the panel selects a winning proposal slash artist. Uh, of course, in, in either an RFQ or, or an RFP, um, there's information for the artist, including uh, the project location, context, budget, scope, if there's a theme, uh, timeline, and other specifics relevant to the project, along, of course, with submitting instructions. <clears throat> With the four pieces for the PRCA, for example, we actually hired uh, Muse Atelier to put together a really in-depth history of the area, and they came up with a theme. Um, so that alone itself was its own process to develop. So the other approach for calls to artists or art um, is an RFP. So a request for proposal is not typically a best practice if the applicants or target audience of applicants will be less experienced or emerging artists and or for lower dollar projects. Um, again, an RFQ process is better as you're not asking artists to put in a lot of work for free upfront. So typically a request for proposals process is for higher dollar or more complex projects where a firm such as a design architecture firm and or an experienced public artist artist team is desired and the call is highly competitive. That's not to say you couldn't do an RFQ for a higher dollar or more complex project. We have done that. In fact, that's what we did for the four public pieces that are affiliated with the research. Um, 
But anyway, since there's no compensation up front for the time it takes to develop a project proposal, applicants need to have the time and resources to develop a robust proposal up front. So they're really submitting really, you know, in-depth, I mean, proposals. Um, so whether it's an RFQ or an RFP, of course, there are best practices in how you do recruitment and outreach. Um, the recruitment plan should aim for a wide and diverse effort. Um, and, you know, here we announce those calls through our e-news letter. I think we have about 900 subscribers. Um, press releases or notices sent to daily, weekly, and ethnic specific press, if appropriate, trade newsletters, direct sol solicitation of candidates. So, of course, if we know someone that's qualified, we'll let them know. We have a call open. Um, and then, of course, uh, an option for notifying a, a pre qualified artist list. Um, and one of the recommendations I'm making before I leave um, is that the arts program do. Uh, a, a call this year for artists to develop a pre-qualified artist list. That doesn't mean that other people can't apply. It just means that um, we will have a roster of artists that we already know are qualified and make sure that they hear about the project. Um, and my staff is prepared to work on that. We have a pretty good database already, but we'll be doing that call. Of course, posting to the city website and city social media, uh, notification through partner agencies, TVC, RAC, THPRG, post a notice in the district or neighborhood in which the project will take place is applicable, and outreach to neighborhood associations, tribal groups, or, or local organizations that serve diverse populations as applicable. Um, and I wanted to note that the DEI grant subcommittee met last week, and they're really interested in expanding our reach so that the diverse and underrepresented artists know about our calls and opportunities. So I think um, you'll hear more about that in the subcommittee report back. So in terms of recruiting panel, uh, panel members, um, of course, we can employ some of the same tools as for the artist call. Um, but may also include more direct solicitation of experts in the region. Um, there should be a strong emphasis on getting a diverse panel, including BIPOC representatives, as well as others that may be directly impacted by the project. So that's neighbor, neighbors, businesses. Um, when we did the, the PRCA call, we had a couple of the neighbors that live right there at the round part of the panel. Um, panelists may be asked to apply to a short application or or at least to submit a bio outlining their expertise or experience and they're also asked to sign a declaration that they don't have any conflict of interest so <clears throat> cadence jump in if i've missed anything here um i just did a quick uh tally of the one percent for our projects that have been done in the last 10 years uh, the Broadway Plaza widening project um, that included two sculptures um, when the Beaverton building was remodeled. Um, there's uh, art that was went to the lobby, uh, uh, a lobby art at the Central Library, um, and then of course the public safety building insignia that went in this last year, and then of course the four public artworks um, that are uh, part of the the research and the garage development. Cadence, did I miss anything in there for the last 10 years? I don't think so. I, okay. I do think that the three creeks, one will was 1% um, because we when we improved the plaza, but. Okay, well, Liz told me that it was not, but <laughs> either, either way, either way, the city funded, yeah, that, um, that piece of artwork. Um, uh, the Crescent Connection Trail Coyote wasn't technically a 1%. Um, and neither is the Holland Crescent beautification project coming up, which I talked briefly with the PAC about earlier. And you guys will be hearing more about in the coming months. Beth? Yeah. On the, on the tail end of the ribbon candy in the uh, lobby, mm -hmm. I don't know if this qualifies or not, but another committee that I'm on, City Committee Week, did a call to artists and work with Valerie Atani and we put in the um we did a call to artists and we got three or four artists and then we picked uh, chuck franklin and he did the mosaic glass mm. across from the um uh, down from council chambers 
So I don't know if that needs to go on this list because I'd have to go through all my notes and stuff to see if it was a not for, not 1% under the second title that you have, but it was um, right, it was after the ribbon candy. Okay. I'm sure we have that in a spreadsheet. Um, we have a pretty robust list of all of the public art um, and I can just check to see if that's listed as a 1% for our project or okay. how it was funded. And that was through BCCI. Right, thank you. Um, and here's just pretty pictures because you know I don't want to just read text. <laughs> These are some of the most recent ones. You know that um, Will is probably installing his piece in the next couple of weeks. Uh, part of the delay was we had to get the wall painted. Um, I don't. I don't know if I forwarded you guys the the update from Studio KCA. Sent some very preliminary photos of the ribbon being um, constructed. They weren't super exciting. It was just a little, <laughs> you really couldn't tell what was happening, but I'll forward them. Um, of course, the lobby of the PRCA, this is insignia um, at the Public Safety Building. So what are the upcoming 1% for our projects in 2021? Well, <laughs> right now we only know of one. Um, that's the pump house panels at the city park uh, that are part of the, the, the redoing of the fountain there. Um, in January of 2021, uh, the PAC recommended that as, uh, as the approach for that, that project. We could have done a sculpture, or we could have potentially done music that coordinated with the fountain, um, but the PAC gave the direction that they felt the $30,000 budget would be best spent. Um, putting murals uh, on the side of this pump house, um, feeling that those panels were kind of drab. Um, and we just had a conversation right before this meeting with the PAC, and they would really like to see that be a project that the community could also participate in. So having an artist that um, is adept at working with community members to incorporate them in the project. Um, the call will be drafted and finalized this coming year. Um, and that'll probably be something that my, my, the next person <laughs> does. And I, I guess I should say now, <laughs> um, and I already told the PAC this, that the, that the next person that's been hired has accepted the offer is actually Laura Becker. So um, for those of you that don't know Laura, she was in the position before me. So she was the public art manager or the arts manager for the city of Beaverton for almost two years. She um, was originally from Seattle. She went up there, back up there, took a job up there. She wanted to move back. Um, pandemic hit, her partner was still in Beaverton and um, very similar to me has decided to end up staying uh, in where she's from and be where her partner wants to be. So um, you'll hear more about that. She can't start until September 20th though. So I think I will be on staff probably till about then. Um, and then here are some other public art projects that I knew you guys would want to know that um, that are coming up that aren't funded through the 1% for art, but nonetheless, I'm sure you'll want to know more about. So the Holland Crescent Beautification Project, which Cadence would be wonderful to speak about uh, if you would like to say a few words, Cadence. Um, and then we're, uh, the Mural Matching Grant Program should launch in soon, and then we expect several downtown businesses to apply. Um, to be able to put murals on their buildings. And again, of course, these will all come to the BAC for review and approval. So that is all I had. Does anyone want me to go back any, to any of the slides or I will just close it out? No, but I had a couple questions. Sure. Um, so uh, just confirming 1% ah. for the arts is about city facilities um and city projects right 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 and so as you can imagine those don't happen every year <laughs> right um, the city doesn't have i don't know how many millions of dollars the public safety building costs but yeah i mean you know yeah they don't it ebbs and flows i mean you could have like right now it's kind of on steroids because we have both the public safety building and the garage and the prca all within you know a couple of years of each other um, and then there might not be a few for a couple of years. 
Has there been any uh, conversations or thought about um, having a requirement within the planning department for other developers to have a certain percentage of their frontage or, private, or, or buy into the stuff? Not that I'm aware of. Um, I do know a lot about private. Uh, one percent for our programs. I can tell you a lot more offline. Um, they're really hard to get implemented, and um, first of all, the developers don't like it, and they'll often. Well, I'm a developer, I know. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but um, it, it's it's challenging. Um, developers aren't usually very good at doing public art. No offense, Ryan. <laughs> So, you know, typically a 1% or a percent for art and private development requires that either the developer put art in the project or do a funds and loo. So pay, pay that amount to the city that goes into a fund that pays for public art somewhere else. Um, it's challenging because developers often don't know where to find artists, how to do art, what to do. So it ends up being really heavy on the staff to either help them and guide them and figure it all out um, or, um, or the, or they put the money in funds, funds in lieu. Um, some, some cities incentivize putting in funds in lieu. And I don't know if this would be legal in Oregon. I don't know the Oregon law around that. I know that in California, um, it ended up being decided you couldn't do this, but in some cities, they will incentivize the developer to actually put funds in lieu by saying it's a half a percentage if you do funds in lieu but it's 1% if you want to do, the, you know, you want to do your own art. Um, and then working with the developer on what is art, you know, how do you define that? Well, could it be this? Could it be that? Um, I know that here in Palo Alto, uh, <laughs> uh, one of the developers that's done a lot of projects there um, wanted to do his own art as part of it. I mean, he wanted to manage that process and ended up doing sort of like war memorials um, at every every project. Um, one was a 9-11 memorial. Um, and so it was like, well, hmm, I don't think that was exactly what we had in mind <laughs> when we were talking about art. So it, if Beaverton wanted to impose a 1% for art on private developers, I think it would require a lot of staff. I think the city would have to require a lot, hire a lot of staff to help manage and liaise um, but those are my my off the cuff thoughts. Well, I was just uh, wondering where the city was, so I appreciate the comments. Cadence, have you are you aware of any discussions about that? Not at this time, no. I cannot get out of the screen. I'm just on my little tablet, so it's hard to. Does anyone else have any other questions for Beth or Cadence at this time? No questions, but thanks for going through that. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. I have a quick question about murals um, matching grant program. I just did a workshop with a mosaicist in Portland, and would mo would a mosaic mural be considered, or is this more of a painted mural? Oh, yeah, no mosaic. I mean, absolutely. Okay. He did a whole King City thing with. Um, community with kids and all sorts of involvement. So I am probably going to have to attach my keyboard to this tablet in order to get it to close out of the screen. Unless, oh, there we go. Sorry. Got it. So it doesn't look like there's any other further questions for our presenters right now, going once, going twice. Okay, well, thank you so much to Cadence P Pet Petros and Beth, uh, as always, for educating us about this very integral program. And uh, if we have any other further questions, um, I'm sure it's okay if, if our commissioners reach out. Absolutely. Great. And uh, Beth and Cadence, is it possible to share your PowerPoint with the Arts Commission? Yeah, I'll send it out. Okay. I will send it out. Okay, great. Thank you so much. All right. 
So moving along, we're a little behind schedule, but our next item are subcommittee report backs. This is an opportunity uh, in case any subcommittees have already met, if they would like to provide an update to the full commission. Since, um, since Commissioner Shelley Fagan is absent tonight, do we have a volunteer from the Public Art Committee to provide a quick summary of that meeting? I will. <laughs> Thank I you, will. Rebecca. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, just have to remember what we talked about. Um, we just talked generally about um, different things that we want to try and do as part of that subcommittee that, um, you know, a lot of our momentum we feel is to kind of promote the arts. There's going to be a photographer come and photograph all the public art the city is going to update the uh, website and put up some more information there. Uh, but we're also talking about setting up some kind of an interactive map so that people can go to the website and be able to go from different pieces of artwork and, and um, read more about it kind of a thing. Maybe get some, and Debbie uh, Thompson is researching information about some of the older pieces. If you go to the city website right now in the arts program there is a section about uh, the public art and the murals and some of those pieces have links on them and more information about those individual pieces uh, but there's a lot of old stuff that there's just not much up there so trying to flesh that out and, and just make that a better you know, resource for us and then maybe we can set up some docent tours um, you know like a bicycle tour or something of the different art. I, I, I just thought of that. But, uh, you know, there's, you know I, I think that uh, we're all pretty stoked up about doing some cool stuff with the public art for sure. So did I miss anything off the top of my head? Um, the Public Safety Center uh, recently landed on a name. Uh, Sue, since you were on that committee, would you like to update us on what the, or, or Jane also, they were, they both served on the naming committee and council decided on a name last night. Sure, it would be. Um, we had a series of meetings with a, we had a full committee to review all of the names that were submitted that came from the public. And um, gee, I wish I could tell you how many we had. I didn't know you were gonna ask me to do this, um, but we had a really wonderful list of names that were submitted to us. And basically when the committee met, whenever we had some questions, um, the city person, Francesca, was always willing to do research. And she did that for us in several instances but the general feeling for the committee, and um, Jane can help me out a little bit on this too, but the general feeling of the committee was that we wanted it to be something that would be suitable to everyone. Suitable is probably not the best word, but something that would fit in for everyone. Um, and the names that we presented to the council last night were Peace Plaza, Unity Square, and the last one was the People's Plaza. So those were the names that we submitted to the council and the council took the vote on them right at the meeting. So that was really fun for us because We'd worked a long time on coming up with names, and they chose Unity Square. Jane, you want to add anything? Um, you know, you, you kind of were spot on with all of the um, activities that took place. We had a great committee led by Francesca, and uh, we came back to the table many times. We had selected first some um, 
indigenous um, na tribal names. And when Francesca did some research, it wasn't really appropriate for us to, um, to name the square. Um, and she did the research and, and talked to some tribal chiefs and came back to us. And then we um, talked about naming it after a person and we didn't want it to kind of outlive or if something happened um, and that person wasn't in good standing anymore, um, we didn't want it to, um, you know, have that issue. So uh, we went back and forth and we came up with those three names that we thought could last a lifetime and the council members went back and forth and they loved Unity Plaza or Unity Square because they wanted to create a feeling of unity in Beaverton. And they thought, you know, this is a great start to have this area um, promote unity. So it was good all the way around. So what, what area was named this? I'm sorry. Where the safe, the new safe public safety building is. It's what Hall and Allen. Yeah right there so 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 this ties in with the arts commission and the public art committee because there will be a naming ceremony a formal naming ceremony now that a name has been decided on in the fall and the idea is that we will um, combine a formal dedication ceremony for the public art that was installed at the center that is blessing hancock's work um, that's on the corner right there so Hopefully, um, those two events will be integrated together and, and combined as one. So stay tuned for more info um, as that moves down the pipeline. And thank you to Sue and Jane um, for updating us on, on that and for all your work on that committee also. It was an honor to serve. Thank you. Are there any other uh, subcommittee report backs at this time? Sure, um, I'll jump in about the uh, diversity and, and inclusion as well as um, grants subcommittee. So we're doing, we have both. Um, and uh, everyone else who's on that committee, feel free to jump in because I'm just, uh, you know, kind of looking through our notes. So we did have, a, we, we got a lot of help. Um, uh, Beth has been extraordinary in getting us um, up to speed on the diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, things we need to know, um, giving us materials to read through, to understand uh, the answers to some of our questions, as well as um, help us, help, sort of help us decide, you know, what we're gonna do, um, we, which we haven't gotten to that part yet. <laughs> um, so what we've been doing in terms of the uh, diversity and inclusion is really getting up to speed, understanding what, you know, um, in terms of grants, that's been less of a, less of a, uh, a focus as I recall. Um, if others remember something more about what we talked about about grants, I know that we had um, some conversation about it, but mostly we were talking about. Um, uh, we did, yeah, we did we were touch on to review more a little bit and add our notes and input on some of the, the grantees um, through the right. their applications. Yeah, one of the things that we were wondering about was really like how far, uh, how early in the process does this, does the subcommittee come into uh, the review of the grants process, and we, we got a little bit better understanding around that. Um, so uh, lots of lots of conversation um, that I can recall and I'm not sure that we have um, like anything hard that we're delivering right now, but um, just getting if, you, if you don't support. mind Lynn Lynn me just yeah. adding a little bit. Um, Please do. Yeah. so I walked the committee through our grant applications so that they could see all of the questions that we ask, um, and as well as showed them the platform where you can score and review the grants. And um, we have a lot of questions. We do have a lot of questions in the grant application around DEI, but the subcommittee gave some really good input. And one of the, uh, there was a couple suggestions, adding a few more questions in the demographic section 
Can you all hear me? I'm hearing a lot of weird feedback. Okay, okay. Um, in the demo, we have a, we ask, it's optional, but we ask app applicants to provide demographic information if they're willing to. Um, and the panel suggested adding some categories like, um, you know, person with a disability, um, English perhaps as a second language. Um, there were a couple other ones and that was really helpful. Um, the, uh, there were a couple other uh, points of input that you guys provided that were really, really helpful for the grant applications that I think will improve them. So yeah, that it was a great, I mean, it was a great meeting. Um, and I, I just, I, one kind of, I guess, personal thing I wanted to add is that um, I think it was maybe a day or two after um, that meeting had been Father's Day weekend. And then the last conversation, my, my uncle passed away the following weekend. And the last conversation that I had with him was the day after Father's Day and consisted mainly of the talking about the BAC and specifically the DEI committee and, and the grants and how important that was to me and how excited I was that we were able to form that. Um, and my, my uncle had been a huge part of the Los Angeles County Economic Development Board, the public library in Los Angeles. He's wow. received, I mean, very, he's one of four people to receive a lifetime stewardship award from them. Um, and he just did really incredible work through Los Angeles. That was really special to me to, to share now, me kind of carrying on in that. So I, there's, it, it was, it was, I have a lot of closure and knowing my last conversation with him. And, and I, I thank all of you for giving me that opportunity to have had that and, and shared that kind of final moment that I had with him because he was yeah. like a father. So thank you. It's no, really great. Oh, yeah. Thank you. just had one quick thought um, relative to if you're adding those kind of questions into the grant applications that may be the public art applications, you know, we need to be adding that kind of questioning into that as well. Yeah. You know, yes. in, in our consideration. So maybe you're building a, te a template for that kind of. That is, yeah, that's included in the, the F call start. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Yeah, the grant grant form is pretty comprehensive. <laughs> well, thank you for those updates, and Destry, thanks for for sharing that with us. And um, you have our sincere condolences, and we we wish you and your family peace and comfort um, as you move forward with the celebration of life later this thank month. Thank you. Thanks. I appreciate it. All right. And I, I don't think there's any other updates at this time. Uh, the Youth Arts uh, Subcommittee, uh, uh, we will be setting our normal time to meet um, this next month. Uh, so we'll report back on when that will be. Uh, we started reaching out to the um, Beaver School District to gain contacts. Um, evidently, there's a lot of shifts in the district. So um, we'll wait until next month uh, to get those contacts because there's a uh, you know, five new theater teachers and a bunch of teachers shifting schools. So we'll uh, um, get working on that. And then, um, and we'll uh, set timelines and uh, stuff next, next month. So Great. that's Thank it for you. the. Great. Is that the yet youngest member of the committee there on your lap? Is that. <laughs> that's right. Good old Amelia. Yeah. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> Well, thanks everyone so much for the updates and we'll move on to staff liaison updates from Beth. Yes, thank you. Um, so the 2021-22 fiscal year budget um, has been approved. Uh, the budget was adopted at the June 15th council meeting. Uh, the fiscal year of course starts July 1. <clears throat> the budget is approximately $441 million, which is $10 million less than last year. The city's overall tax levy rate for operating purposes remains the same as the prior year um, at $4.23 per $1,000 of assessed value. The budget reflects completion of several capital projects and anticipates revenue from stimulus and other programs such as the CARES Act funding, the American Rescue Plan and the Water Infrastructure Finance and Innovation Act 
Notable expenses <clears throat> include, include the construction of the Patricia Research Center for the Arts and district serving public parking garage, um, housing affordability programs, sustainability efforts, and water and street improvements. You can learn more at beavertonoregon.gov slash budget. Um, we are asking people to save water this summer. In Beaverton, water consumption is its highest in the summertime, often doubling or even tripling. You can reduce outdoor water use um, by adjusting sprinkler heads, watering in the early morning or late evening, and watering less often and for shorter cycles. Um, you can go to beavertonoregon.gov slash water for a fully a full list of water saving tips, including indoor conservation and how to stop leaks around your home. Um, this is the weirdest one I've ever given. A national chlorine shortage is heightening conservation attention. Beaverton receives most of its water from the Join Water Commission water treatment plant, which relies on chlorine in the treatment process. Uh, you can learn more at jwcwater.org. Um, the Beaverton Night Market is back and it's a new location. As Razi, I mentioned earlier, the market will take shape on the streets of downtown at Southwest Street, bleh, Southwest First Street and Southwest Tucker on Friday, August 18th and Saturday, August 14th. And that is in conjunction with the Chalk Art Festival. Um, in addition to vendors, performers and designated food courts, this year's Beaverton Night Market features an exciting collaboration with La Strada de Pistale Chalk Art Festival. The event is free. Learn more at beavertonoregon.gov slash night market. That is all I had. Great, thank you so much, Beth. Uh, we are at eight. Um, so if anyone has to leave right now, please feel free to do so. We have one more agenda item, which is arts announcements. Uh, we've had a lot of announcements throughout the meeting and we also have announcements that people have posted in the chat. Is there, um, and just a reminder to save the chat so that you can reference it later. Um, you click on the ellipsis at the bottom of that chat window and you can save it to your computer. Are there any other announcements that anyone would like to add at this time? I have two if I could. Yes, um, so I popped it in the chat, but um, if you know any young thespians out there, uh, middle school program for the Young People's Theater Project is happening starting next week for two weeks. Um, uh, I, I put a link where where to register. Um, they also have scholarships available for those that um, uh, need them. Um, so um, uh, they're a, a very inclusive group um, and um, would love to see new faces. And then two, um, uh, uh, just to, <laughs> bounce off of what Beth uh, announced. She, she announced a chlorine shortage and you wouldn't think it would affect arts, but it does. Um, uh, uh, chlorine is used in the makings of adhesives and most petroleum products. So if you use matting adhesives, anything from 3M um, or um, Dow, um, uh, it will affect you, your pocketbook and your art. So. Wow, I don't know. It is affecting most of my projects right now. Um, uh, to the tunes of hundreds of thousands, almost a million dollars, and about six months delays. So, where does big, chlorine come from? Why? Why don't I don't I? I guess I'm dumb on chlorine. I don't. Um, Texas um, makes about eighty percent of the chlorine used in the United States. Um, Texas had that freeze, and ever since then they've had rolling power outages. Um, they also import. Um, about 50 to 60% of the imported chlorine and other chemicals that are used in the United States as well. Um, and they hold our reserves uh, for chemical and petroleum products. So. And I guess we do need that. <laughs> Useless information right here. Okay. I thought I was on mute. So that was, that was fucked up. That's the, yeah. Is that what you talked about at cocktail parties, Ryan? You know? Yeah. Chlorine shortages and <laughs> I I'm so good at cocktail parties. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Ryan. Are there any other announcements at this time? Rebecca? Mm, I just got a, a thing actually in the mail today. It was seemed to be kind of late about the experience theater project. Um let me 
show you. I just brought it up. It's just this weekend. It's like the complete works of Shakespeare. Has anybody heard about this? Let's see here. Let's see. There, yeah, they here. did the shake. This, uh, Can you see this? Side. The West Side Shakespeare Festival. Have you seen this? Can you see this on my screen? Yeah, we're, we're, we are one of the funders. Help yeah, Beaverton City Library South Lawn. It's this weekend, 16th to the 18th. So sword fighting workshops and beer and wine. And I mean, I mean, this just looks fabulous to me, two stages. So uh, you might look into it, West Side Shakespeare Festival. Great, thank you, Rebecca. Any other announcements? Yep. Rosgate, yes. I have one more, and it's going to require you to go outside the Beaverton zip code. Um, <laughs> uh, the city of Hillsborough is doing Celebrate Hillsborough on Sunday, July 18th, so it's this coming Sunday, and it's one of their annual events going strong over 20 plus years. Um, uh, it's happening along Southwest Main Street, I think believe between 3rd and 1st. You'll have vendors, artists, music, music stages. Um, I'll be chalking a large piece in the Civic Center Plaza. So again, you'll be able to see some live chalk art. Uh, and then I'm also coordinating multiple artists along those auxiliary streets who will be doing smaller chalk drawings too. So um, come enjoy Sunday the 18th and I think it kicks off somewhere late morning. Great, thank you. Thanks. Any other arts announcements at this time? Okay. Oh, Jim. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, I didn't say this earlier enough. Volunteer for the Strata City Night Market. Let's get out there. Let's show what we are. It's about time. We love it. Let's do it. It's about time. Do it. Thank you, Jim. And thank you. Thank you for um, dressing for the occasion also. <laughs> thank you. All right, so um, just quickly, we also wanted to suggest that in the spirit of summer and summer vacation and uh, spending time with loved ones, uh, that we take the August meeting off for the regular BAC. So are there any objections to that if we take the, that, just that meeting off? I see, it looks like people are in agreement to take it off. Okay. That'd be just for the regular meeting with subcommittees also meet. Correct. So it, it's just for that regular meeting. That meeting is also the same week as um, as the Chalk Art Festival and and uh, Night Market too. So there's a lot going on. Uh, but no, it doesn't affect subcommittees. Subcommittees can, um, of course, meet uh, as they please. So it's just for that one August meeting. Yes. Okay. So uh, we will uh, not have a regular BAC meeting in August. Uh, we hope everyone enjoys their summer and has a, a peaceful and safe summer vacation. So with that, uh, this meeting is adjourned. It was lovely to see everyone and um, hope everyone takes care. Bye everyone. Good to see y'all, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.